This research methods in psychology video is the process of peer review. Arguably the point of doing your research is to add to scientific knowledge. To do that, your work needs to be available for other researchers to read. So scientists publish their research as an article in an academic journal. But in order to be published, their work has to survive the process of peer review. And in this video, we'll look at what peer review is, why we do it, and some evaluations of peer review. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification, and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos, and the Discord channel. The process of peer review is relatively simple. A researcher who wants to publish their study submits it to an academic journal. This journal then sends the paper to a few independent experts in the area of psychology the paper covers. The experts, or peers, will consider the quality of the design and the methodology, so for example, were there any potential extraneous variables in how they conducted the study that just weren't controlled. They will check the data analysis and consider if the conclusions made in report are justified by the results. Then if the peer reviewers are happy, they can then recommend it for publication to the editor. Or they can reject the paper, maybe with suggested changes to be made before it can be accepted, or maybe if the research is very flawed, even reject it without the possibility of resubmission. This then goes back to the editor of the journal who, on the basis of the reviews, will make the final decision on if the paper should be published. So, why do psychologists go through the process of peer review? Well, this process has a few purposes. One of the main reasons for the system of peer review is it's a form of self-regulation within the scientific field. The idea is it keeps scientists honest and their work high quality as they know their studies will be checked by fellow experts. Peer review helps to stop poorly conducted research being communicated to the public as scientific fact, helping to improve the credibility of science in general. And having a large number of peer reviewed papers also increases the reputation of the organisation that created them, usually a university. A large output of high quality scientific research results in a higher research rating. This research rating is then used by the government when making funding decisions, favouring institutions with a track record of producing peer reviewed work. Criticism of peer review. Peer review has a number of criticisms. Many areas of scientific research have a small community of researchers who study that topic. This can make it very difficult finding suitable experts in a field who can understand the work well enough to conduct the peer review. And if you do find suitable experts, there can still be problems. If they know each other, there might be professional rivalry, and papers might be rejected to settle old scores, or so the peer reviewer can publish similar results first. Or if reviewing the work of a scientific leader in the field, this might bias the peer reviewer into accepting the paper without full scrutiny, or even worry about an angry response if they reject the paper. Now to deal with some of these issues, the peer review process can be blinded, I have a single blind so the researcher doesn't know who's reviewing the paper, or double so the reviewers don't know who they're reviewing. But researchers can often be identified by writing style, and anonymity comes with its own problems, as reviewers who know they're anonymous might be more likely to steal ideas and be unnecessarily harsh. Now as journals themselves want to be highly regarded and read by members of the scientific community, there's a tendency to favour publishing research showing significant results. Now, this is understandable as new findings are exciting, but this publication bias towards positive results is problematic. There are many research studies that have been conducted finding no significant result that simply sit in the researcher's office unpublished. It's known as the file draw problem. This can mean other researchers waste their time doing a literature search, not finding those negative results, and then conducting research that is down the same dead end. Also imagine a drug treatment that's had 20 studies conducted, and in 19 of those studies it was found to be completely ineffective. So the data sat in the file drawer. But one of these studies showed a significant result, and was published. This would give the impression that the drug is effective, even though the results were down to chance. The peer review process can be a slow process, with some journals taking months or years to publish articles after submission. Now, this is problematic in fast-moving scientific fields, and might be slowing down scientific progress. So that was peer review. I have six tutorial videos covering the 2017, 18 and 19 AS and A-level research method sections. These videos have worked examples to every question and are full of exam tips. Patrons at the neuron level and above can access these, and many, many more hours of exam tutorial videos, as well as over 100 printable resources from across the A-level over on psychboost.com. I do want to thank all the students and teachers who've supported Psychboost over on Patreon during the development of the Research Methods Unit. 
It's their support that allows me to teach part time so I can make Psych Boost on YouTube for everyone. I also want to give a special shout out to the patrons who support me at the developer level. So thanks to them, and I'll see you all in the next Research Methods video, Psychology and the Economy.